A political concern from Mueller's team, as you just heard Dan allude, newly released emails show that a man called Andrew Weissman, who's Mueller's deputy on the Russia probe, praised acting Attorney General Sally Yates for refusing to defend President Trump's travel ban. Using his work email, Weissman sent Yates an email after Trump fired her saying, and I'm quoting, I am so proud and in awe. Thank you so much. All my deepest respects. In other words, Weissman despises Trump so much that he supports politically motivated bureaucratic defiance of the president. Nevertheless, he remains on Mueller's team, and it raises a bunch of obvious questions about the fairness of this process. Britt Hume is Fox's senior political analyst, and he joins us now. Britt, I don't think, um, I mean, I've held back for months now criticizing the Mueller investigation because I, I want it to be on the level, and I think Americans have a right to believe that justice can be done in this country. And so there have been all these stories about the number of Mueller deputies who were big Democratic donors ignored them. But at some point, you got to wonder, how could a team comprised almost exclusively of people who hate the subject of the investigation conduct an impartial investigation, a fair one? I think that's the question, Tucker, and it's one that uh, I've been asking myself in the last several days, given what we learned about Mr. Strzok and now Mr. Andrew Weissman. And, you know, for the, I don't, first of all, I don't like special counsel investigations or special prosecutors yes. or independent counsel or any of the lot. I think it's always and everywhere a terrible idea because it sets up what amounts to an unaccountable unit using the Justice Department resources, but really as a practical matter outside the Justice Department's control. And it puts a, creates a situation in which a prosecutor appointed to do an investigation feels that it is, he is called upon or she is called upon to prosecute. So it creates, I think, a bias in favor of action, even where none may be warranted. And it's been only a handful of, of these appointed special prosecutors who've ever backed off and said nothing to nothing to see here. Um, so I think that's a problem. Now you enter into it this possibility that, that that important figures within the investigation may be harboring serious bias against the subject of the investigation, and I think you have a problem that is made even worse. I this Weissman thing particularly bothers me. After all, what was in stake here, Tucker, was an order that was issued by the president, controversial though it was. I don't think it was good policy, but I think he had the legal right to do it. And I think the Supreme Court has signaled in recent days and before that it also thinks he had the legal right to do it. And here was the right. acting attorney general in the Justice Department saying, I'm not going to use, I'm not going to support you in this. I'm not going to make the case for what you've done here. That is a dereliction of duty. She was fired for it. She should have been fired for it. It was a huge grandstand right. place. She was widely applauded on the left for doing that but and, and for this Weissman guy to weigh in with this with this this cringingly uh, 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 this, this email this suck up email to her uh, raises I think serious yeah. questions about his impartiality and whether he can be impartial so I think we have some serious questions well, on the table here no question about it so the basic question is, does this have anything to do with collusion with Russia and Russia's effect on the 2016 election outcome, which was, as you know, the original pretext for the investigation that seems to have been abandoned? Nobody seems to have noticed its disappearance. Will this investigation wind up in the end bearing directly on the question of Russian involvement in the 2016 election? Uh, my guess is it will. Remember, Tucker, this started, this investigation, which, which, uh, which Mueller took over, started under Comey way back in yes. 2016 and was a counterintelligence investigation. That is to say, it was an investigation by the FBI acting as an intelligence agency to determine the extent of Russia's efforts to penetrate and influence the election. And it was not at that time thought to be or, or to be a criminal investigation. And in the course of that, you'll remember, Tucker, um, we now know that James Comey told the president, told now president, then candidate Trump, that he was not the subject of the investigation or a subject of the investigation. Now we've progressed to the point where the, it's taken over by Mueller and, and in his charge the question of any collaboration between the Trump campaign and the Russians is certainly part of it. But it's not all there is to it. So at some point we're going to get, I think, from Mueller's team a report on what the Russian side did, what they tried to do. And we will find out, presumably in the course of that, whether they think there was, there was some kind of collaboration between the Trump camp and the Russians that had any some significant effect on the election. I continue to hold out hope that in the end, Mueller, a man of considerable reputation, will have the integrity, if he finds nothing really worthy of prosecution, to pass, to, to say right. so. But I'm getting less confident of that by the day, I'm afraid. I am too. I don't want to feel that way, but the evidence is mounting. Brit Hume, thank you. 
Explosive and exclusive new information will put further pressure on Special Prosecutor Bob Mueller to resign. That's the focus of tonight's angle. Last night, we brought you a disturbing and revealing report about FBI investigator Peter Strzok, who was relieved of his duties in the Mueller office after it was revealed that he texted anti-Trump messages during the 2016 presidential debates. Previously, Strzok had been a top investigator on the Hillary Clinton email probe and was responsible for watering down the language then-FBI Director Comey used to describe Mrs. Clinton's handling of classified information on her private email server. Isn't that neat? The original language called her grossly negligent, which, by the way, can be a criminal violation of the applicable statute. But it was changed by Strzok to merely extremely careless. Once again, Hillary ends up skating for conduct that would have put any of us behind bars. You see, Strzok was kind of a Forrest Gump of the FBI, but without any of the endearing qualities. Why do I say that? He was present during Hillary's one and only interview with the FBI. He was an agent who interviewed Hillary's longtime aides, Huma Abedin and Cheryl Mills. And then he helped grill former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn on January 24th. So I have a question. What the heck was Strzok's magic touch? Why of all of the hundreds of lawyers in the FBI, was he always so lucky to get these plum assignments? Well, I think we all know why. And as a weird aside to this whole fiasco, if you go to Strzok's Wikipedia page, it reads that the website is considering his whole page for deletion. That's a bit odd, don't you think? As far as the media go, well, they spent the day either ignoring or downplaying Strzok's conflict of interest. Mr. Strzok, the, this FBI agent in, in, in charge, it doesn't change anything, uh, the, the one that, that has been removed from the investigation, it doesn't change anything. The notion that FBI agents or people who work on behalf of the government aren't supposed to have any political feelings or any political biases, uh, you know, th that's, a, that's a little bit of, a, of an overstatement, right? They aren't. There is politicization here. But also, uh, this, is, this is the president continuing uh, to go after American law enforcement. Okay, I have a question. Will the media be able to downplay all of Mother, Mueller's other tainted investigators? The conflicts in the Mueller shop don't stop with Strzok. According to documents obtained by Judicial Watch, former head of DOJ's criminal fraud division, Andrew Weissman, emailed acting Attorney General Sally Yates praising her for refusing to enforce Trump's travel ban in court. On January 30th, shortly after Trump fired her, Weissman wrote, I'm so proud and in awe. Thank you so much. All of my deepest respects, Andrew Weissman. Oh, isn't that sweet? So naturally, when the time came to choose his deputy, special counsel Mueller chose Weissman who was also his former partner at the law firm Wilmer Cutler. Think about it. Weissman, chosen to be the number two guy on an investigation that could lead to the impeachment of the president of the United States, given those statements, when he was on the record celebrating Yates. Remember, she was an instant hero of the left because she refused to enforce that same president's lawful executive order. My friends, we are talking willful defiance of the chief executive officer of the United States. Trump is their boss. It's simple, folks. Weissman must be removed from the Mueller team because of the apparent and real conflict of interest his presence represents. And finally, our exclusive report on yet another Mueller prosecutor who's compromised, this time because of her alliances to the Obama White House. Meet Jeannie Ree. She was hired by Mueller in early June and also a partner of Weissman and also of Mueller's old law firm, Wilmer Cutler. Previously, she was a deputy assistant AG in the Office of Legal Counsel. That's for Obama, and that meant she gave official legal advice to the Obama White House on policy. But that's not even the most interesting part of the story. We've learned exclusively from sources on Capitol Hill that just weeks before joining the special prosecutor's team, Ree was the personal attorney of former Deputy Obama National Security Advisor Ben Rhodes and was, in fact, 
his point of contact with the House Intel Committee in its investigation into Russia. Now, she didn't actually appear with Rhodes at his closed-door interview last spring, but that was only because by then she was already working with Mueller. Oh, and did I forget to mention that she also represented the Clinton Foundation and donated about $9,000 to Hillary and her fellow Democrats? Once again, another member of the Mueller team has been exposed for brazen partisanship, which at the very least, very least, represents the appearance of a conflict of interest, if not an actual one. Let's face it. What we're seeing here is a pattern and practice of Mueller hiring known Clinton and Obama political insiders and boosters, supporters, to undo a presidential election. That was the election of Donald Trump. But what's the common denominator of the three amigos here? Well, they all hate Trump. But more than that, they're political adversaries. Given the gravity of the situation, given all that's at stake for America, Robert Mueller needed to assemble a team of unassailable professionals. They needed to run that investigation professional, professionally and without any question. Instead, as we're documenting night after night, what Mueller did, he hired a pedigreed team of obvious partisans, a revolving door from working for political opponents of Trump to working on the investigation into Trump and his supposed Russian ties. What a total travesty. They should all step aside. They should all go back to their old law firm, their old buddies there, including Bob Mueller. And that's the angle.